you know, Slash didn't walk out for no reason. He walked out because the band had become a parody of themselves. And it wasn't true to the spirit of rock and roll anymore. I think Axl Rose is what went wrong with Guns N' Roses. You know, I, th I think his ego just got so inflated that in the end, it was like Axl and his backing band. And that was never the point in, in, the, in the group, you know. Um, I think in the end, Slash got bored of all the bullshit. Unfortunately, after the whole Use Your Illusion tour finished, you're then talking about a Guns N' Roses lineup that is little more than a, a farcical revolving door of, of musicians. It's almost, there's almost no point trying to keep track of it. You have Axel, who is very much Guns N' Roses' um, leader. Guns N' Roses vocalist, no one else can do it. He has the name GNR, but who's he got in the band? Um, oh yeah, Dizzy Reed, who played keyboards a bit on stage with them. And who else? Uh, yeah, good point. Who else is in that band? So no one really knows. Then you got Velvet Revolver with Slash, Duff and Matt Sorum. But they haven't got Axel. It's been a long time since Spaghetti Incident, their last all new studio recording, albeit of covers. I still hope there is a legacy to come. The great lineup will get back together with or without Stephen, but certainly with Duff, Izzy and Slash and Axel. I'm sure it's going to happen to a three or five years down the line. But right now, Guns N' Roses' legacy lies in appetite for destruction. It lies in the enormous energy of that record, the inspiration of that record, the songs on that record, everything about one of the greatest pieces of music ever committed to vinyl. Ultimately, you don't really need to know much about music to understand the innate appeal of a, a exciting, sexy, dangerous rock and roll band like Guns N' Roses. As a band, they appeal to a huge cross-section cross of people. You know, I know a lot of people who were pure hip hoppers who loved Guns N' Roses. They awakened a whole generation of, of rock fans in a very short period of time. They reawakened an interest in proper musicianship, proper rock, proper rock and roll, proper live shows. At the time, you've got to remember, although you had thrash happening and you had, for want of a better description, big hair happening, this was rock and roll. This was like nothing else around at the time. It didn't fit into the comfortable pigeonhole of Metallica or Bon Jovi. This was different. Whatever people say about um, what's happened to them since, um, it doesn't really matter. It's almost part of the magic though. It's the madness of Axl Rose. It's the sheer lack of control. It's the ego, the drugs, the women, how they just completely live this unbelievable lifestyle. Images of them will always live in the memory. You know, Axel, just a total iconic front man. Him and Slash being the great, like, like Jimmy Page and Robert Plant, like Mick and Keith, they were a great kind of foil for each other. Ozzy Osbourne once described Guns N' Roses as being the new Rolling Stones. Um, and to an extent, I think he was correct. It's probably more accurate to say that they were a part Stones, part Pistols for a new generation. Yes, they had the vibe and the atmosphere and the raunch of the Stones, but they did not have the longevity. They did have the aggression, the vitriol, and the short, bright lifespan of the Pistols. Not many bands can actually walk it like they talk it, quite genuinely. Guns N' Roses were a product of their times, and they were confined to that time. But what a product, and what an amazing time. You know, Guns really, really brought the edge back into rock music when it really needed it. Not only did they do that, but the reason you all have a classic album 
is if you've got classic songs. And there are so many on Appetite for Destruction. Whatever they do in the future, and I hope there'll still be some great things to come, that is their legacy to the history of rock and roll. And there are very few bands of whatever stature who can actually lay claim to anything that comes close to the stature of that album. Stop.